Hey YouTubers, today we're going to be talking about the Evonix, or Evonix as it's also pronounced, um, Rainstorm 2, okay? Um, this is a really cool gun, and I think that it it's definitely one of those guns you should take a look at. The reason, um, this is a pre-charged pneumatic rifle, okay? This is one that I, if you saw my last video, maybe you heard me referencing, um, this is one to strongly consider, or at least take a look at. Um, one thing that I like about it is it has this beautiful Indonesian stock. It's an Ind Ind Indonesian walnut stock, and you can see the different colorations in it, and maybe you can see the different grain texture. So for those of us that like classic rifles, okay, and clean just transitions and lines, okay, Maybe this is a rifle worth looking at, okay? Fine checkering, laser engraved checkering and whatnot. And it's it's very functional checkering. It's, you can, I mean, it just feels really good in hand. Um, so this is the Evonix Rainstorm 2. This is the 30 caliber version, okay? And so... This is what's considered a mid-bore. So a mid-bore, okay, and it's kind of confusing terminology, but basically my idea or understanding of a mid-bore is a mid-bore is a uh, big-bore rifle, okay, but mid-bore is with respect to power, okay, because power is always a relative term, you know what I mean? Um, and the reason mid-bore is a... Um, is uh with respect to the caliber okay so 30 caliber is a big bore right but it's called a mid bore because it's with respect to the power so this is a hundred foot pound gun okay now there are rifles like the air force texan that have the ability to uh put you know uh, 500 foot pounds on target with a big old chunk of lead okay but you know you get a couple of shots or a handful of shots okay before it's time to um refill okay and so let's put this in perspective okay and i brought out a couple rounds this is a 177 okay that's a 177 14 grain RWS wad cutter. This is a 25 caliber, okay? That's a 25 caliber slug, and it's an HN and Grizzly, okay? It weighs about 33 grains. This is a Nielsen specialty ammo slug, okay? And it's a 66 grain slug, hollow point, okay? Both these are uh, hollow point slugs, okay? Uh, for expansion and to make sure that you're getting energy on target so that you can ethically take game. So a 30 caliber or 7.62, right? Um, so mid bore, back to mid bore and what mid bore means, at least to me. Okay, so the cool part about this um, pre charged pneumatic rifle is, is uh, instead of getting, you know, maybe a handful of shots, okay, this can get two nine-round magazines, okay? And it's got a smooth lever action, okay? Uh, cams, it, it, it has a cam, a sort of linkage, okay? And I'll see if I can't show you that in detail. So listen to it snap and close. So when I, you see how it, that's what's holding it closed is it has this linkage that sort of cams shut under uh, tension and that's what keeps the uh, bolt locked. So this is the magazine. Uh, it's an uh, auto indexing magazine. So when you turn it, you're winding it. Do you see how that uh, every time it indexes to the next round, it, it's winding the uh, magazine, okay? And so, like I said in my uh, previous review, I leave a empty chamber for safety's sake, okay? Because I wanna carry my rifle on an empty chamber. So I'll go through, I'll load around, and that lo that's a little loading gate that you see there, kind of similar to that of like a single action army or something like that. It has a little loading port. So you load around and press it in, okay, and index it. So once you do that so often, okay, this is a nine round magazine after you've done it nine times, or in this case, eight times, you would 
uh, have it fully wound and then you would be able to load around in. Me, I just like to leave around empty, okay? So this would be the first round, okay? And then I can carry it in my rifle and when I need it, I pull it out and wind it. Or you could wind it, right, hypothetically, and leave the last one out and so pretend that it's wound, okay? Um, the the, the uh, bolt, okay, or the probe, okay, when it makes contact going forward to load the round in, or better yet, the empty chamber, what it's doing in effect is it's hitting this button, and this little button puts tension on it, okay, until it completes its, its index, okay? It knows when to stop. So that's how it indexes from one round to the next round, okay? Um, let's see, let's get back over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, mag in the rifle. It's got these little slots, this little lip, and basically, I'll actually bring you in a little bit closer. So basically you would just find your, your slot and it has this on this side that mates with the, the receiver, okay? It's got a little ball detent that you saw there, spring-loaded ball detent. It's a really slick design. So it just rubs against the receiver until it hits that little notch right there. So we'll go ahead and load it in. I'm kind of doing it through the through the camera. Um, so you'll have to forgive me for fumbling around and whatnot. But so there I go ahead and I find it, I push it in and it clicks. It makes a sweet little click noise and there you go. And it's actually, it can be loaded from the other side of the rifle or it can be loaded from this side of the rifle. It's an ambidextrous loading system, which is really, really cool. Uh, not all rifles have that kind of thing. Um, and I like the fact that they incorporated that. Now me, personally, with my, my, my setup that I have, I'm gonna go ahead and lower the bolt and it's lo lowering on an em empty chamber. And when I lower the bolt, I'm just gonna put tension on it and lower it slowly. I'll flip it over so it can show you this side of the rifle. I'll actually come around like this, flip the rifle. And then, so see how I have this inclusion with this uh, parallax adjustment wheel? This just makes it easier. Uh, gives you a little bit more, um, gives you a little bit more um, finer tuning ability and it gives you more, is dexterity the word I'm looking for? It gives you more dexterity. It makes it just a little bit easier to grip, okay? And so that's why I have that. This is a UTG AccuShot. It's the same scope that you've seen me running on my Glacian, if you saw my previous review. It's um, really cool. Here we go. We got some really nice markings um, and whatnot. And uh, just, yeah, really cool stuff. So this is uh, the, the UTG AccuShot 36 color combo. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this around so you can see. But back to what I was talking about, about mid bores, okay? This rifle can get two nine shot magazines out of it before your point of impact drops. So technically you'd probably get three mags out, but I wouldn't wanna press it past two because that's where I know, I know where my, my point of impact is with that set velocity, right, okay? Um, now, you might have noticed, if you've got a sharp eye, and if you've seen this rifle before, you might have noticed something a little more different about this rifle, something that doesn't come factory, and that is actually this moderator, this, this big old moderator. This I got from uh, a company called Lone Wolf, and he made, uh, I believe he's based out of Poland, and he still makes them. Um, I'm pretty sure, and so it's a moderator, and it came from factory with a um, uh, end cap on the shroud. This is a shrouded barrel, okay? Like I was describing in one of my my last reviews, um, uh, a shrouded barrel means that there's this is an actual outer sleeve, okay? And so there was an end cap okay, or a thread protector on the end of this shroud, and that's where the barrel ended. So pretend that's not there anymore. So that's about how, approximately how long it would be w without it. Let me just kind of, sorry guys, I'm just trying to help you picture it better. So that's about how long the rifle is, okay? Um, I don't have exact specs, and I'm not going to pull out a tape measure. Sorry, guys. But so that's about where it landed. So this was a really loud, loud rifle to fire. This is not a backyard friendly rifle. It has a, a, 
a serious crack to it. It's not something you want to fire in a residential area uh, due to neighbors possibly worrying and stuff like that. And and aside from the noise complaint, but, um, you know, it, for safety's sake, this isn't really something you want to fire in your backyard unless you have the appropriate um, hardware to deal with that, like a, a, like a, like a really big backstop and a, and a, and a well-built backstop. That would be acceptable in that situation, I suppose. So back to the, the shroud that I put on, this is actually a shroud for, um, uh, or uh, pardon me, this is actually a moderator for a, uh, a 35 or a 357, okay? But I put it on in, in the event that I would get the uh, 357 model later on, I'd be able to swap out um, the moderator, okay? And so... So that, that, that was kind of my ideas on that. And at the time, this the, I'll actually go into it, uh, the uh, story behind this rifle. So this was the second that I bought this years ago, like like six, seven years ago, somewhere around there. Okay. It's had thousands of rounds put through it. It's a fantastic rifle. But I bought this a long time ago. And when I did, there was only one other company offering a 30 caliber at the time. And that was FX out of Sweden, I believe. And um, so that that was the only other 30 caliber you could get a hold of. Well, with my, my Glacian, that was one of the earlier uh, first uh, 25 caliber rifles. Okay, it was it was one of many. Okay, so there was like five or ten, or uh, companies were catching on that hey, 25 caliber is gonna get big. So I got a 25 caliber. This was my second rifle I ever bought. Okay, and this was the second rifle on the market for 30 caliber. And I said I I really really want that. Okay, and f and actually I believe Evonix actually had 357, 45, and um. I want to say 50 caliber at the time, but they just didn't have a 30 caliber yet. And I wanted something a little bigger than the 25, and you guys kind of get where I'm going with this, I think. Um, you know, I just wanted to step it up a little bit. And that, and the, uh, the ballistically speaking, when you go from a, say, a uh, the, the, the uh, 357 version of this, it'll throw a 357 slug, which is a lot heavier, a lot more mass, a lot more energy. You're talking about 150 foot pound gun roundabout, okay, but it throws it at about 800 feet per second. And then, so kind of with these mid bores, what you start to see is, is the bigger the caliber, yes, you're doing more FPE or foot pounds of energy, but I feel like me personally, when I'm going with a mid bore, you start getting a diminish in return, okay? At that point, you're better off going with what I would consider a big big bore, which would mean fewer shots per fill, right? But very high intensity, hard hitting, you know, uh, 357, 45 caliber, you name it, 50 caliber, right? You only get three shots of fill, but you're shooting at your prized buck and you've got, you know, uh, you know, you've practiced all season or whatever have you all off season. And so, uh, making the shots not going to be an, an issue, right? And you really need that power. You really need that energy to go to target. Okay. So that's when it makes sense to me personally. Um, and that's cool if, 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 you know, you vary on that, but so the 30 caliber made sense to me. Okay. So two magazines on a fill, okay. 18 shots. Um, you know, that's cool for plinking and that's what I do with this. I shoot this at a hundred yards and, and at a hundred yards. Okay. Um, it can put a grouping together like a three leaf clover. I mean, I can literally put three rounds in my thumb at, you know, 100 yards. Um, it is a fantastically accurate rifle. And I'll show you something kind of cool about the shroud system here. This is not um, factory. What I did, okay, was I actually, um, well, I guess I'll start off with this. So this unscrews, right? This is the shroud, the sleeve I was telling you about, okay. If I can ever get it off. Sorry guys, this is kind of a two-handed operation and I don't have a like 
camera tripod, right? So this is kind of what I'm what I'm working with. Okay, so there there we see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this. Uh, well, I guess we'll do it like this, and I'll kind of made it so you can kind of see what we're dealing with here. This is actually a relatively compact rifle um, without the shroud or without the moderator, right? But without the moderator or shroud, we're sacrificing um, our stealthiness, right? We're, we're going to, it's going to put out a lot of noise. And so, you know, it behooves us to um, use the um, moderator, okay? And I'll show you one of the modifications that I did that helped it greatly. So right here is the end of the muzzle. It's got this brass fitting that's machined to the barrel, okay? And so there used to be a rubber O-ring and all that O-ring did, in my opinion, was keep the shroud from rattling, okay? Or flexing and then, you know, making contact with this, okay? What I did was I put grooves, okay? Or flutes in this, okay? I put flutes in the, um, the, the, this portion that, that just kind of uh, mates, and it mates via the O-ring. So the O-ring's what kind of uh, keeps the shroud from moving back and forth. Okay, um, and I'll show you why I did that in a second. So when this, um, when the shroud goes back on, one second guys, sorry about this. <laughs> I know this is kind of tedious here, but I'll see if I can't prop it up. Sorry about that. We're almost there. And so I got this clever idea, okay? And I'll show you right now what I'm talking about. So what I did was I, I milled the flutes right about here, okay? And remember what I said, the, the, it, it came factory with a end cap there, okay? I removed the end cap and I screwed on my moderator, okay? Um, and the, um, the, the uh, flutes I, I, that I milled into there, okay? What they do, what they provide the service that they do is, is when the round travels down the chamber and you have all this high pressure air, okay? And it starts getting into here, okay? You, you could see how when the pellet's coming out, you're gonna have this turbulence, right? You're gonna have this turbulence uh, behind the pellet. So what I did was I milled those, those flutes 360 degrees around that that um, spacer and what it does is it lets back pressure that would otherwise compress in this hollow tube okay it lets that bleed out through these holes and what I did was I milled these holes okay or better yet drilled okay drilled these holes and you really can't see it too good but what I did was I drilled these holes that have sort of a conical um, porting, if you will. And so what that does is it means that the, the air has, it when it encounters the turbulence and it starts, you know, going into the, um, starts going into the baffles, what it does is it lets back pressure that would stack up just bleed out of the system. And you can actually feel a, um, a plume or a, a puff of air come out the, um, come out those ports right there. And so I'm not saying that it's gonna give you match grade accuracy or anything like that, but I'm sure it certainly does help and it doesn't let it stack up. Um, and and it lets your, your, your moderator, okay, and it lets the baffles act as an air stripper so the turbulence, okay, around the pellet can be dissipated. And I've had many guys get on this rifle, okay, at the, at the shooting range, and they just absolutely love it. And they're, they're, they're just the way their their face lights up, okay, because of how accurate it is. And it's, it's very confident, inspiring. Now, this, unlike the 25 caliber, actually does have recoil to it. Believe it or not, it, it has recoil. It can move the scope on you. And um, it'll move what uh, where your crosshairs are, are at. Um, so it has hold sensitivity. And what hold sensitivity means is, is that 
when you fire it, you have to have a nice solid grip on it and you have to be consistent. And um, it's just, it's, it's, it's a fantastic rifle to shoot. It's a blast. Uh, it's safety system is right here. It's a, uh, it's mechanical safety. And this is not an auto safety. I'm going to get comfortable here. So it's not an auto safety, but instead what it is, is a uh, manual safety. And it's a simple um, switch, if you will. And it's very well done. Okay. And it's kind of recessed. So it's out of the way um, to where it can't snag on anything. But when you go, you can click it and it's got fine knurling texture, very fine machine work. Okay. And I'll see if I can't get you a nice little picture of that. So you've got your safe and fire. Now, typically I don't use it, truth be told. And the reason I don't, okay, is because generally I'm carrying on an empty cylinder with the hammer down, okay? So the hammer's down, it's on an empty cylinder, and so you have basically a dead trigger. You keep your finger, you know, out of the trigger guard until you're ready to shoot, okay? And so that's that's how I deal with that. And when I'm out in the field, I'm hunting or I'm target shooting, that's um, typically the way I go about it. I, um, I, I, I just prefer that method. So when I need uh, a round, um, I, 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 I run the bolt and it will it will then uh, load it. And it's a very, very, very smooth action, just fantastically smooth. It's, um, I'll get you a close up. So there's our Rainstorm logo. And I mean, it's just, it's effortless. It's effortless to be able to run that bolt back and forth. And it's very uh, low profile. It's tucked away very cleanly. You can see there's a little bit of an edge here. And so, I'll see if I can't get you a view of this. My finger's not in the trigger guard, so everything is uh, copacetic. So here's my hand. My finger's not in the trigger guard. It's got this very nice notch, and it, you know, my tip of my finger kind of stops there. Okay, and so you know, I you know take my shot. I can easily come up here and then pull it back. I'm gonna go ahead and decock it so you can kind of see that in action and kind of hear all the mechanical noises it makes and whatnot. So there I am, okay. So, and then just just like that. It's, it's, a very, it's a very fluid system. So in order to decock it, I basically grip it, I pull the trigger, I let it down slow. And once again, the magazine is not wound and it's on an empty chamber. So everything is good. Okay. And as long as you, you're slow to lower the bolt, uh, the rifle will not go off. Um, so I'll, I'll show you something really cool. And it's something so subtle and simple that I don't think most people would think much of it, but it's really worth noting. Look at the way the stock is carved right there. Okay. Look at that. It's, um, it's milled or it's carved in a manner to where you can do thumb up shooting, which is, I, I, I don't know a good way to explain it. It's the bee's knees. Um, when, when I'm holding this rifle, okay, I'm gonna zoom out so you can kind of see, I have my, 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 my finger here, okay, my trigger finger, okay, and it, it's, it's very pistol grip like, and it, it just lends very well to shooting. It's something that, if you haven't tried, um, if you haven't tried it, I'd, I'd strongly recommend. If you're shooting this gun off the bags, off off sandbags, or if, if you happen to be shooting it off of um, sticks, or if you happen to be just reflexively shooting it, it lends itself very well to uh, be very easy to control. It has that very uh, tactical kind of pistol grip like but it maintains its classy uh, wood uh, looks, if that makes any sense. Um, now, the trigger pull on this rifle is factory. I haven't messed with it. It's, um, I want to say it's maybe six pounds. I've never measured it. A lot of guys call it a, a, a good hunting trigger, and 
it's a very predictable trigger pull. It goes back, and when it goes back, um, I'm not going to show you guys just for safety's sake um, and, and time time constraints. I'm not going to show you uh, me pulling the trigger or me putting a, a scale on it, but it basically, when you pull it, okay, it pulls, and you can feel it come up to a stop, and then it it, it, it encounters resistance and then it just it pulls and it has a little bit of pressure and it feels like the lightest double action trigger you've ever pulled so it requires follow through but here again with that thumb up shooting position it, it's almost like the thumb and the finger it just agrees you can get that right pressure and you find the little crook in your finger or maybe the pad whatever you're comfortable with shooting and you you come up to that stop where there's a, a little bit of play in the trigger and then you it starts engaging okay and it just it's like a light double action and it just breaks like glass i i know that that's sounds cliche or or it's overused sometimes when describing triggers but that's that's exactly how i feel about this um in terms of match grade trigger job yeah there are some guys that will say you know whatever they like their triggers and ounces or whatever but um, in terms of actually hunting and speaking of hunting and I might annotate it I might not but this this rifle's taken probably like I don't even know it, it's taken at least seven rabbits and humanely taken them down very quickly it's um, I've taken squirrels with it and I, uh, I took one squirrel and when I shot the squirrel I, I hit the center mass and um, of its chest and it was just it was instantaneous lights out like i mean it, it, it it's a very potent uh rifle and so um let's see did i show you guys the manometer i think i didn't so i'll go ahead and show you that now um two times zoom and then so there's our manometer and 200 is our uh working pressure right 200 bar which is like what 3000 PSI and you can kind of see some dings in my stock but I think it gives a character what do you guys think you know I mean I think it kind of uh adds to it you let it you know it you, you know it's used you know what I mean and uh, I prefer to baby my rifles as some people say uh some people say I baby my rifles but I I prefer to just you know keep them pristine but if i get it you know scratched or whatever it in you know it's in it's in, in the field of use no biggie now the utg um scope um i haven't really talked about that a lot um but i roll with the utg scopes because of budget friendliness like i'm cheap like uh that's not to say that i don't like you know capable um gear items i do but um, the UTG performs fantastically, and you know what? Just because right now I'm in the mood to do zooming and stuff, it's got lockable turrets, okay? And so, let's see if I can't kind of just show you that. I'll try and get this rifle nice and steady and, and see if I can't kind of show you. So, whoop, no, that's not steady. Not steady at all. Okay, there we go. So, once we have our zero, click, 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 okay, we can turn these and just lock them, and then it, it'll hold your zero, and you can unlock them as needed. And I find that this is, uh, it just, you know, it works, you know, there's no need to mess with it. Now, in terms of this um, scope being like, I don't know, a Hawk Sidewinder, or um you know some leopold some expensive kind of scope it, it's not that um if i could show you the reticle i would i fear that it, it wouldn't it wouldn't really come out that well um in this given light and it, it would be a little bit um hard to you know capture that reticle but the reticle is a little bit of a thick black Okay, and it's got its 36 colors, which is awesome. If you're hunting at night and you've got a light, say that you're uh, hunting uh, pests or uh, predators, and if it's legal, okay, so within your state laws or whatever, you know, if you have the ability to spot them with the light, okay, and not have to run a night vision 
or a thermal or something like that, um, you can spot them. And I find that it, the 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 thirty six uh, color illumination is actually really handy at night when you need to see. Uh, your mill dots on your reticles for hunting, and I've actually used it for hunting rabbits um, and uh, deprivating species like uh, like armadillos and stuff like that. Um, you know, animals that would otherwise tear up um, properties. Um, I was actually out hunting um, on an exotic game ranch. Uh, and uh, I had the pleasure of uh, being able to, to help those guys out. Uh, my brother-in-law, um, he's he's cool with the um, the owner of the ranch, and so they invited me out, and it was just an awesome time being able to hunt, uh, you know, and do that sort of thing. But um, so so uh, I guess what before I went on that rant, uh, I guess what I was trying to say about the scope is it's capable and capable hands. Um, it's a good scope. Is it the best? No, it's 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 it's, it's there. I've looked through scopes. I've uh, actually went to an air gun shop, a PCP shop. And uh, there was a gentleman showing me a scope that costed like three hundred and fifty dollars or something, and I looked through it. And by way of reference, this is like a buck thirty. So I looked through this gentleman's scope, and it was just awesome. I mean, the finest reticles. Uh, you know, you could you could see everything. This is an etched glass reticle, but it still leaves like a very thick uh, military spec like dot you know and it's not like the most uh precise of reticle that's not to say that uh you can't get precise results with it i do i do all the time i uh once again you know it's not uncommon for me to be able to shoot clothespins at 50 yards with this scope this gun everything that you see here it's not uncommon i can i can shoot them on command and i can also um take um take and shoot closed pens at 100 yards and i've actually taken uh, a lot of gentlemen out to do s such tasks okay um at the shooting range and whatnot and you should just see the look on their face they're grinning from ear to ear when they shoot this rifle like it's it's you know i i you know it's just one of those things that kind of warms your heart um but that's basically it the evonix rainstorm 2 a uh, fantastic rifle a excellent rifle uh, if you happen to like uh, uh, mid bores or you like precharged pneumatics this is a, a rifle definitely I would take a look at it it's a quality build there you know there's no uh, there's no um, there's nothing that's uh, that you have to fix or mess around with, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, the, there are some rifles, people get them, and they're like, oh, man, I had to do work on that trigger. I had to shim out the trigger. There was too much play in it. Um, there's guys that talk about, you know, having to, you know, uh, put barrel bands on it to make it more uh, accurate and just accuratizing it. And um, that's not the case with this rifle. It, it just shoots really, really well. Um, with the moderator on it, it sounds like, like it makes a noise like ping. It's all you're hearing is the check valve being hit. And a lot of dudes will get um, a lot of dudes I take shooting with this. They'll get um, kind of. Uh, uh, what's the word? They'll get kind of normalized to the sound of it firing, and then I'll take the shroud off and let them fire it. And they're just their face, just their expression on their face. They 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 never thought that a air rifle could be so loud. It's a very loud rifle, and uh, it's a, a very potent rifle. Um, so I guess that wraps it up. It's a it's a quality build. If you're thinking about getting this rifle, um, if they still even make them, I don't know if they even still make them. Though, but if you can find them, they are very very good rifles, and they're very quality uh, built. Um, there's not much you're gonna have to do to it. If you're looking for a plug and play, go out and uh, go hunting or whatever have you. Sorry about that. That's that's one of my uh, old soap molds and uh, coffee cans. <laughs> Um, 
So I appreciate you guys for checking out this video. Uh, if you liked it, hit like, hit subscribe. I hope to have more videos coming out. Uh, I hope I don't bore you guys too much. Um, if you have any suggestions in terms of uh, next reviews, content, um, or you want to send me a rifle to do a review on, I will. Um, I hope in the future that I'll be able to get you guys some actual shooting reviews. But for right now, I'm just going to focus on, uh, you know, gear review videos, give you kind of my take on the rifle, and just, you know, that slow classical ranting, you know. So if you're into that, stay tuned.